Hi, today I've been painting a common blue butterfly and um, the reason why I decided to do a little film about it is because up till now I've always had them wrong. I've done them much, much too green. But I'm very fortunate in that my friend Wendy, who's an amazing costume maker, has given me a set of butterflies recently and it's an old Victorian collection and I suddenly have at my disposal a lot of beautiful butterflies, including absolutely loads. Can you see them? Actually, let me take the glass off including absolutely loads of these different blue ones. And when you look at these, you suddenly see the iridescence in them, which I hadn't even realized before. I'd never realized. So going back to my painting, I realized that I couldn't just use the colors I'd used before. I had to use iridescence. So I don't know if I tilt it like that, if you can see on the painting, but so how on earth do you get iridescence onto a painting? Well, what you do is you use your eye makeup. So this is, um, this is pigment actually, but I always use it on my eyes by Cornelius and Sons. So that one has a slight kind of pink tint. And this one has a kind of green tint. And this one, which is again, uh, an eye makeup, it's got kind of blue tint. So I mixed these, um, I'm going to take the lid off. I mixed these different shimmery, these different shimmery colors. Can you, oh, you're not gonna be able to see in the video, which is so annoying. Maybe you can see on my fingertip. Can you see it shimmers? I mix these different shimmery, um, shimmery colors in with the paint. So now when it catches the light in a certain way, the painting itself shimmers and it's much closer to reality. Inevitably, inevitably, the glory of a butterfly is always so much, so much more beautiful than the, the second ray copy that I do. But having the specimen is also wonderful because look, can you see the little eyes here? On the wind, on the wings, the little eyes which are showing through from the back, and you can see them on the specimen as well. So I could include those as well, which I haven't done before. Um, so I really enjoyed working from this specimen, this male, this male common blue, and I used, like I always do, Winsor and Newton Series One paintbrush, Series Seven paintbrush, and that's a number one with a decent point. My paint box, which is mostly Winsor and Newton colours. Um, and I also refer, as well as these beautiful butterflies, I also refer to the Field Studies Council butterfly chart, which is by Richard Lewington, who is an absolute hero of mine. So that was very useful. So this illustration, it's coming on now, so I'm going to just hold that there for a second. And, uh, uh, we're getting there. So we've got, we've got the stone chat and the small copper. And there are various bits in the skipper, various bits that still need to be done. But I'm getting there and I'm feeling really quite encouraged, especially by the fact that I'm feeling really happy about the way that the, um, that the little common blue male has gone today. Hi, so this is just a tour of this painting that I've just finished. Tour of the butterflies. This is a small copper butterfly. And there's a little specimen just there. And then this is a red start and red starts are called red starts because they've got red bums and um, uh, start in the old English means bum. This one's holding a caterpillar in its, in its beak. This is the orange tip butterfly with my painting and then with the actual specimen. And there are some swallows up in the sky. And here we have the small pearl bordered fritillary. And can you see the actual pearly bits? on the underwing and I've tried to catch that with some pearlescent paint which you probably can't see at this angle and when it's with its wings wide open like this specimen here that's what it looks like and down here we have a marmalade hoverfly which I just love the fact that they're called marmalade hoverfly this is a green veined white in the specimen over here my pride and joy the common blue which I am um, have lathered and slathered in eye makeup to make it iridescent. Over here we have the female of the common blue, who is a um, much more dowdy creature than the male. I love the fact that in butterflies and birds and so on, the males are far more flamboyant than the females. In fact, human beings are one of the only species that I can think of off the top of my head, where the females tend to be more flamboyant than the males. And that wasn't true. Um, that's only, only quite recent, that is, if you think back to 16th century and even to sort of arm, you know, um, posh military outfits nowadays with lots of braid. Um, anyway, bumblebee, white-tailed bumblebee, and bombus leucorum, I think, and the actual specimen. And a buzzard up in the sky, 
And there's a little detail here in the landscape, which is an otter who seems to be in quite intensive conversation with a dipper, which is a little bird. Um, so there we are. So that's the, let's see if I can do it all in one shot. There you go. So that's the landscape completed. Um, thanks for sitting with me as I explained that to you. And um, hopefully the person who it's going to um, will be pleased with it. It's an idealised vision. It's an idealised um view of a very beautiful corner of a nature reserve called Gilvac, which is a nature reserve owned by and run by Radnorshire Wildlife Trust. Um, and this is the hay meadow corner of it. And um, it's, it's a member of staff is leaving. And so this is a way of commemorating all that he's done for the reserve in a painting. Okay, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And always remember, if you can work from an actual specimen, life is so much easier. Bye.